This is packet number 10 and problem number 1. And the concept that we're looking at today using the definition of the derivative f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x is one of the most important concepts in calculus. And understanding this concept as well as how to do these problems will be significantly important during the course of our work throughout the first semester and subsequently during the second semester when we work on integration. What question, part of the question A, how you read it is f prime of 2, or the derivative at 2, equals the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2, all divided by h. Now, the notation is going to be important here. I am going to require that you use, you write down h going to 0 each and every time you do one of these problems on each different line. Okay, I'm going to be very specific about that. Um, it, it too, writing math appropriately and formally is an important concept to get used to as well. So when we take care of problem part A, we're finding the derivative at 2, which means we're finding the slope of our curve, which is f of x equals x squared, right at when x is 2. What is the slope of this curve? right at 2. Okay. Now we know the function value at 2 is 4, but that's not the same thing. When I draw a tangent line at 2, if I draw that tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is equivalent to the slope of the curve at that point of tangency. So what I am finding will be two different, two different things that have the same, same number and same meaning. So in order to go about doing this problem, I need to take the limit as h goes to 0 of my function at 2 plus h. So my function is x squared. So I'd have 2 plus h squared minus f of 2. Well, f of 2 is just 2 squared, or 4, all divided by h. Uh, we need to do some algebra. So the limit as h goes to 0, notice I wrote limit again. If I multiply out the 2 plus h squared, that is 4 plus 4h plus h squared. And then I still have to subtract off the 4 originally, all divided by h. And that equals... Notice, and I mentioned this in an earlier video, that at this stage when you have to do the algebra to simplify your numerator, this 4 and this minus 4 will cancel one another off. And if I'm doing my algebra correctly, everything in the numerator will have a term, in this case h, in, in each part. And that's because what will happen is I'll be able to factor out the 1h and it will cancel with our denominator. If I tried to put in the h approaching 0 earlier than before I had divided these two terms out, I would get 0 divided by 0 which is called indeterminate form. It's not undefined. It's not anything. It means I need to do, if you get something like this, you need to think about doing more algebra. So in our case, to finish out what I had above, I now have the limit as h goes to 0 
of just 4 plus h. And as h approaches 0 in that, my derivative is 4. Now, I don't want you to make the mistake that just because the function value is 4 there, that this 4 here means the same thing. It does not. This means the slope of the tangent line and the slope of the curve right here, the slope of that function is 4 at that point. Unlike part A, which asks for the derivative at a specific value of x, which was 2, part C is asking for the derivative in general, okay, because at every point along y equals x squared, every point the function has a slope. So since it has a slope at each value, you know, there's, there's slopes all, all along each point on the curve, I could take each of those values and I could create another curve. So that's finding the derivative, the derivative in general. And in order to do that, I have to take the limit as h goes to 0 of my function at x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So my limit as h goes to 0, my function is x squared, so x squared evaluated at x plus h is x plus h squared minus my function which is x squared all over h. The Expanding that out, I have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus an x squared all over h. Since I'm running out of room, I'm going to let you finish that algebra out. I will tell you that your final answer is 2x. So the slope of y equals x squared at any particular value of x, all I have to do is multiply that value by 2, and I have my slope of the curve there. So I could say that the slope of the curve at 6 would be 2 times 6 equals 12.